Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. Oh, morning stars together proclaim thy holy birth.
face Did you know that your baby boy Will one day walk on water Mary, did you know that your baby boy Will save our sons and daughters Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new This child that you've delivered Will soon deliver you Mary, did you know That your baby boy Will give sight to a blind man Mary, did you know that your baby boy will calm a storm with his hand did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod when you kiss your tiny baby you've kissed the face of god the blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leap, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know? That your baby boy is Lord of all creation Mary, did you know that your baby boy Will one day rule the nations Did you know that your baby boy Is heaven's perfect this sleeping child you're holding is the great high am. All about. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Sure, Charlie Brown. I can tell you what Christmas is all about. Lights, please. And there were in the same country shepherds, abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. That's what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown.
that's on. Yeah, there it is. Let's bow our heads and pray real quick. Yes, we are going to have a candlelight service. The band will come back up and sing uh, Silent Night and a couple others as we close this service out. I don't want to keep you here for more than four hours tonight because I know some of you have to have to go home and get to bed. So, no, I'm only kidding. Um, but, I, but I do want to uh, just bring up a few things about Christmas Eve. Father God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. And Father, we are just absolutely grateful that we have a Savior. And his name is Jesus, Father. And he came in the harshest conditions. And Lord, we just, we just thank you. We thank you and we love you, Father. Lord, help us to hear the words you're about to speak tonight, Father. Lord Jesus, open the eyes and ears of our heart, Father. Again, we are so grateful and, and just, I can't even figure out the words. But Father, thank you. In your precious name we pray, amen. Now, in that clip, and I did this for a reason, um, I, I've been watching the, the, the Peanuts Christmas story for many years now, and you know, I was sitting there watching it the other day, and I go, huh, I didn't, I didn't understand that. Now, we've had a series for the last month called Fear Not. And, and it was really kind of interesting, because if you noticed in that clip, when Linus said, fear not, he dropped his blanket. He dropped his blanket. And all of a sudden, his hands come together, and he's like this. Now, I want to tell you something. In every single Peanuts movie I've ever seen Linus has never let go of his blanket that's what he found security in so so in that place where all of a sudden Linus goes and 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 the angels of the Lord said fear not and he lets go of the one thing that he finds secure in his life you know it's it's kind of funny when we think we have all the security we have in something, God says, no, I'm the only thing that you can find security in. And it's really kind of interesting that Charles Schultz knew that. You see, Charles Schultz was a Christian. And so when he put that particular dialogue together, what he was telling you is that Linus, when he says, fear not, drops his blanket. Because he knows in Christ there is no fear. And then he quotes Luke 2.14. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth peace and goodwill to men. Now what's kind of funny is this is all taken from Luke. The story of, of the birth of Christ in Luke. Now the word peace this whole, this whole sentence, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill to men. In the Greek dictionary, the word translated into English has this meaning. And is, it is described as a state of untroubled, undisturbed well-being brought about by God's mercy, granting deliverance and freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as a result of sin. All that came from that one one verse right there. Isn't that funny? That, that, that we sometimes have the hardest time figuring out that the reason God gave us a Savior is so that we could experience the state of untroubled, undisturbed well-being brought about by God's mercy, granting deliverance and freedom from all the distresses, all the distresses and distractions that are experienced as a result of sin. Now, another fact that, you might, that might bring some realization in the Christmas story is the fact that those shepherds watching the sheep, right, those shepherds were not your normal run-of-the-mill shepherds. I studied this out about two and a half years ago, and, and somebody posted on Facebook just a little while ago this morning, I think it was this morning, the last 48 to week hours is kind of a blur, but it, it's like he said, why the shepherds? Why those particular shepherds? Let me tell you something. Those shepherds were chosen 
because they were the ones that took care of the sacrificial sheep. Those weren't ordinary, ordinarily, those weren't ordinary run-of-the-mill sheep. They were sacrificial sheep. And sacrificial sheep only gave birth in the winter and in the spring. They were a fat-tailed sheep. So there was a difference. Now here's, here's the other funny thing. Those shepherds were a little more higher class than the shepherds that just raised normal sheep. So, so when the angels said, go, go and, 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 and tell everybody these things, the percentage of how many people these shepherds were talked to were higher than the ones that smelled actually like sheep. These were a cleaner shepherd, per se. And so because of their medium class status, they could go and speak to the more elite of the time. And so when they paraded in to go find this, this, this savior, this babe that was being born in a manger, what happened? They on the way started talking to people. And, and in that talking to people, what happened? Other people heard. <clears throat> and remember this, that it was not just one angel, but a multitude of angels. Now, I was trying to find out the absolute number of angels in heaven, and I couldn't find the absolute number. But I would tell you this, for this there's probably a million angels. And, and, and now you think about this. When the angels of the Lord appeared, these are elite angels. These are not just normal angels. These are the cream of the crop angels. These are the warrior angels. These are the angels that came down and they are now singing in a unified chorus. I don't know, and I've said this before, I don't know if anybody has heard angelic voices sing, but I can remember sitting in a, in a, in a Sunday service and I literally heard, the whole church heard the angelic chorus behind the chorus in the church singing. Because when the chorus stopped in the church, the angels still sang. I'm telling you, this was a special night. This was not a normal run of the mill, hey, it's Friday night, guys. This was a night that was going to be talked about for all time. My, my, the sad thing the sad thing is how many churches tonight are not packed? Because see, if you remember correctly, a long time ago, I spoke about the Israelites and, and how when Joshua led them into the promised land, they had, to, they had to take these rocks that they had gathered and they had to set them up. And every time they walked in and out of the area, they were supposed to tell the story of Chris, of, of, of how they got to where they are. We have, been, we have been given the greatest sacrifice in life, God giving us his son. And, and as he gave his son, now Jesus wasn't born in the Holiday Inn. Now this place where the shepherds were gathered when the angels came, it's a place called Magdal Eder. And Magdal Eder means the tower of the flock. The tower of the flock. It's first mentioned in Genesis about where the flock will gather. Now, the sheep were located at the tower of the flock, Magdal Adar. And Magdal Adar is close enough to Bethlehem that the, the, they're thinking this is where the angel showed up. The angel spoke to the shepherds. The shepherds took off and then they found the baby. And that's when they celebrated. When the angel said, fear not, the shepherds were, were a little bit afraid at first. And then all of a sudden they did exactly what Linus did. They dropped their security knowing that something was different about this. And, and they began to see 
what was about ready to happen. And so, and so they no longer were afraid. So God knew that in the travels of these shepherds, there would be no fear in them as they told the story about what's coming that night. Jesus is that tower of refuge. And we are his flock. And in him, there is no fear. In him, there is no fear. In him, there is a state of untroubled, undisturbed well-being brought about by God's mercy granting deliverance and freedom from all the distresses that are experienced as a result of sin. Those are the things that come with Jesus. He becomes the tower of the flock. The last thing I want to say before we end this, I told you this was not going to be a, a, a long service, is this. And it's the last verse in Luke 2, 8 through 20. It says, the shepherds returned, glorifying God for all the things they had seen and heard. See, this should be a night of glorifying God. This should be a night of of praising his son. This should be a night of looking at things and going, you know what? This is something that, I've been given, that's the greatest gift of all gifts that could ever be given, is that this night, and you know, some of my purists, I know I got a lot of purists are going, well, you know, it wasn't this night, but you know what? Considering these sheep were in this place at this time, in the darkest time of the year, tells me it was winter in Israel and in Bethlehem. Because we've, as a matter of fact, we've looked that up already and we've spoken about that. So glorifying God for all things they had seen and heard, which were, which were just as they were told it would be. You see, here's the other thing. When God says something and when Christ said something, it was just as they said it was going to be. And tonight, it can be just as it says they can be. You see, we, we, you know, we've got trees, we've got gifts, we've got this, we've got that, but we also have Jesus. And this was the gift that was the best gift of all. And so, again, as we, as we think, you know, many of us will go home tonight, you know, and, and we'll go, wow, you know, think about that. Think about that time when Linus said, fear not, and he dropped his blanket. Do you have what it takes to fear not and drop those things that you think are secure for you and be in that state of untroubled, undisturbed well-being brought about by God's mercy, granting deliverance and freedom from all the distresses and distractions that are experienced as a result of sin. If I can have those candles handed out right now. Father God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you, Lord Jesus. And the band needs to come up and get ready to do their thing or Fred or whoever. Father, we just thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift that you have given us, Father. And for the proclamation made that night that we don't need to fear. Fear not. Fear not. Because He comes with great tidings. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. And we love you, Father, and we praise you. In your precious name we pray, amen.